24 years ago today, June 4th, 1997, uh, I delivered what was the hardest speech I've ever had to write and absolutely the hardest speech I've ever had to deliver because I was delivering the eulogy for my mentor, Bill Spellman, a man who it is safe to say I loved more than I loved myself. So, I know there is a uh, video of this out there somewhere of the speech I gave. Um, I don't have it, and I want it. I want this preserved for all time. So, I've decided to try my best to deliver it again. Now, the amazing thing is, when I first did this. I gave a copy of the speech to the minister because I didn't think there was a chance that I could possibly get through this without losing it. So uh, let's see if I can, and, and I did get through it. I delivered the whole speech. <sighs> let's see if I can do it again 24 years later. Dr. William Spellman. I first met Bill Spellman when I was a junior in high school. After visiting several colleges, I found a man who cut through the bowl and told it like it is. Immediately, I knew I wanted to come to Coe. For many of us, the introduction to Spellman was interesting. Some remember falling asleep in Econ 1 and feeling the sting of a well-aimed piece of chalk ricochet off your forehead. For others, it was on the football field, attempting to translate the next series of plays he already envisioned in his mind. For many of us, the first real encounter came after life handed us some trouble and we needed help. Help from Spellman was born of compassion, not sympathy. No matter how deep the problem, he played his life role as mentor, guiding us to solutions. At times, all we would need is a good listener to talk it through. But if need be, he could be very direct and tell us what we had to do. His intuitive sense of how to handle life's problems was perhaps his greatest gift. Bill's sense of decency was instilled at an early age. His mother was a union organizer who dedicated her life to helping those who were working in deplorable conditions. Meanwhile, his family was very poor. He said it gave him a good understanding of hard work and his help the little guy ethic. Thanks to a loving family, he said he didn't even comprehend how poor he was until he was well into adulthood. Dr. William Spellman has many accomplishments. As an economist, his list of publications is impressive, to say the least. He was a labor arbitrator. Accepted younger than most into the profession, he was one of the impartial people a company and a union could turn to when they could not settle a dispute. As a respected academic, he served on the accreditation team that reviewed the curriculum and faculty of other colleges. As Coach Leroy and Coach Thurness can verify, his expertise as a coach was unsurpassed. He used his passion for teaching and his excellence as an instructor to make economics understandable and yes, even sometimes interesting. For Spellman, there was nothing more important in his role as a husband and a father. In our many personal talks, his face would light up when he spoke about the kids. All of you know Spellman as a fighter. He passionately fought for what he believed. But he was a fighter in other ways. Long before his heart attack, Doc had many serious ailments, with the most severe being systemic lupus which literally attacked the joints in his body. Even after numerous surgeries to correct bone spurs and even having a piece of bone removed from his arm and replaced with a rod, he commented to me in January that he considers himself lucky. Lucky, I said. Doc, how can anyone who's as many physical problems as you possibly consider yourself lucky? And he said, no, really, I mean it. My lupus is attacking the bones. It could be a lot worse. He carried that optimism with him following his first heart attack. 
We spent a lot of time discussing how we could return to teaching and how he'd have to change his teaching style now that it was unrealistic for him to draw 48 graphs on the board in one class period. He also gave thought to his return to coaching. As a man in constant physical pain for the majority of his life, we can take some comfort in knowing that he's free from pain. On Sunday, a friend commented that he's probably already challenging Moses to a game of racquetball. Bill Spellman was known to us by many names. Bezo, Billy, Bompers. For, for four people in this room, he was dad. For most of us, he was simply Spellman. For me, he'll always be Doc. I've always believed I've always believed that the best thing you can say about a man is that the world is a better place for his having been here. As I look around this room, I can see how much better Co in this world is because of Bill Spellman. Each of us had, has had time to think about the positive impact he has had on our lives by helping us to be better people. The spirit of William Spellman lives on. Yeah, uh, that was a speech that I made through about as well as I made it through the first time I delivered it. Um, there were 800 people in the room on a Wednesday morning in the middle of summer. As, as another friend had commented, if this funeral had happened during the school year, we'd have had to rent out the largest auditorium in Cedar Rapids for his funeral. Um, that was the impact he had on so many people. I, uh, I appreciate you taking some time to, I don't know, for, the, for those of you who knew him, reliving some memories.